Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> We're just uh, seeing who will log in today. Did you survive your party? Ha, oh, barely. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was a lot of work. I was tired, <laughs> but yeah. it was fun. The kids had fun, so <laughs> well, good. Are you getting over that cold? Yeah, it's slowly going away. You it's uh, it, allergies. You know, my allergies are really bad, so it doesn't help. That <laughs> oh, I understand that. I get that, and it, it comes on all of a sudden. It's like all of a sudden you can't talk. It's like. <sighs> yeah exactly it's like oh no <laughs> yeah but i feel like i can talk a little bit better this week so it's good oh that's good let's see here how's the weather out there lord it's cool, but it's it's warmer in the last couple of days. We had a lot of rain last week. Oh, really? And, yeah, and then <clears throat> it gets cold at night, but then in the day, in the afternoon, it's it's like you're you've got heating on in the evening, and then in the morning, in the morning, and then by afternoon, you want to run your air conditioner because it's like ninety five. Oh yeah, we oh. stay the same temp almost. <laughs> Yeah, that's almost better than than what we're doing, but that's the way it is out here. Yeah. Well, it's not fall yet by the temperature. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we get, we get milder winters. I guess that's good. Yeah, that is. Except I'm out here by the river now, by the Pecos River. So we get a lot of fog and humidity, and that's yeah. not always good for my, um, you know, asthma yeah. and bronchitis. Um, now, where are you in Grants? No, I had to move from Grants. I, I had a bad case of um, altitude sickness, oh. and they kept telling me I would adjust and it would get better, and it got really bad over Mother's Day weekend with all the smoke from the fires. So uh -huh. I ended up having to move. I'm out here by Carlsbad now. Oh, you're further south then. Right, yeah. because I lost about 4,000 feet in altitude and trying to see if I can adjust. And if huh. I can't adjust here, I have to move to Arizona. Oh, well, if you like New Mexico, I hope you get to stay there. I do. I like New Mexico. We stayed here when I was a kid for a while. Um, in fact, I guess we were right in this area because a lot of stuff is, you know, still a lot of the old houses are familiar. My parents traveled a lot. Uh -huh. I think my, my dad was, he did union work from what I can gather. And my uh -huh. mother like did powwow circuit and stuff. So, uh -huh. they did, so they travel around, around with me when I was little. Yeah. I've always been here where I am. <laughs> That's yeah. almost better. I think it was confusing when I was little because we moved so much. You know, we were in yeah. Oklahoma and then I lived with an aunt and I lived with a grandmother and then I lived with another grandma on the other side of the hill and you know. Yeah, um I'm 
<clears throat> live in different parts of Oklahoma, but I've always been here. Yeah. Wherever, wherever I had to work, went to work. Yeah, they even sent me to a school in um, the Choctaw School in Mississippi for a while. I found pictures of me there. Oh, uh -huh. so I was staying with a with an aunt or some friend of the family or something there for a while. <clears throat> well, when I was at Sequoia, we had quite a few Mississippi Choctaws at Sequoia. Mm hmm. Yeah. They had it rough for a while. Oh yeah, I went there uh, to visit the libraries and they were 50 to 75 years behind. And they were with their farming and then when it was out in the, were on the Choctaw Reservation. And then I think it was the following year, they killed those civil rights workers. Do you remember they were trying yeah. to they were trying to register them for vote, I think, voting. Anyway, it was near there. It was in uh, Pearl River. Near, near it was called Pearl River. Yeah, I know. I've been there. They've got a really big casino there now. Oh, okay. I, I've never yeah. been in the casino, but it's real popular. Huh. That's, that's good, because there was nothing at <clears throat> and the uh, lady that I went with from Muskogee, she said that the, just the men went to town. The children and, and the women didn't go because there were no facilities, bathroom facilities available. So it just made it hard. And yeah, they're they're so, yeah, so that's where, the, that's where they were when I was there. And then they, they were planning on like the way my dad used to years ago, I remember, that the they had a mule and the one nothing to ride on. They just walked behind. You know, right. It was real. I, it was interesting. I think yeah. in the late fifties, early sixties, their chief uh, Philip, I can't remember his last name. He uh -huh. walked in Washington to. Um, you know, lobby for jobs and, and businesses to move in there. And uh, the company I worked for, I worked for them later on, was called Federal Signal. They were, they did government work and they built police car lights and warning signals and they moved all their cabling in there. So that helped them. They got that electronics uh, contract. Wow. And that's after that, they got um, permission to put the casino up there. Yeah, and I think they have fairly good health facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I there was a girl, woman I grew up with. Um, <clears throat> well, she's younger, but her mother, sister's the same age. She worked there for a long, long time with the Indian Health Service. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. But yeah, when I was at Sequoia then, it was pretty bad, pretty primitive. Yeah. It's, it's looking much better today. But Good. They've even got a, a, a shopping mall. They've got their own grocery store and stuff up oh, there. Oh, wow. well, that's good. That's real good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dorothy. You must be asleep. She'll be on here in just a second, Dolores. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Well, so far it's just us. Um, we could finish that recording. Okay. That, was, that we started last week. We'll uh we'll wait for Grandma Dorothy to get um situated.
All right, I'm going to uh, queue up the recording. Okay, now they can hear you. Are you going to come back later? Yeah. We can go to Dollar General. All right. Or Family Dollar. Here. Throw these. In. Okay. Did you get four on here right now? You going to be here for a while? For a little bit. Hi, Grandma Dorothy. Hello. Okay. Had to. I said had to. Um, it's just uh, me, you, uh, Grandma D, and Lori so far. There's four of us. Huh? Paul. Um, <coughs> let's see. So I thought we could uh, finish that recording we started last week. Okay. Let's see, so I'm I'm pulling it up right now so I can share my screen. <coughs> It was a Kiowa culture program number 38. It was called The Use of Nature. And we got through uh, 16 minutes of it. And so I'm going to, uh, let's see, started around that same. Oh. Okay, let's see here. Oh, people in a picture. Okay. Uh, let's see, 1646. It looks like there's about 20 minutes in the recording. So we probably have about four or five minutes left of this one. Yeah. You, you, right, you used a prayer that they used, do you remember? Oh, that's right. And uh, probably the Norman people are at the base of stuff. Yeah, that's right. They're they're doing um, what is it? It's their Native American weekend this weekend. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> yeah, Courtney just messaged me and said that's where she was. That she doesn't. Okay. She won't be able to make it. All right. Let me um. Yeah. Let me play the opening prayer then. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, ah, uh, go. Color culture program is, uh, we're having here at the uh, home of Mr. Mrs. Harden Big Bow. And uh, people uh, are present today, I will call a roll. His name is Tom Little Chief, James Silverhorn, Hazel Bolton, Esther Topan, Lucy Samte, Isabel Two Etchett, Lloyd Toy Ball, George Cunha Daughter, Yale Spotted Bird, Bessie Alhane, Frank Samte, myself, Nelson Big Bow. And at this time, uh, this is session 46. I mean, I'm in the part of it, 47. And uh, I want to ask my brother, uh, uh, James Silverhorn, to lead us in uh, open prayer here. This is winter. It's about to end the winter, and uh, them kind of uh, people like him that uh, call his holy, highly uh, respect, something that you really sincere and need. That's what I've been told by the elders. And uh, at this time, uh, there's something has kind of kind of touch us in our hearts that I uh, hope everything will turn out in our in a good way and uh, I ask my uh, my brother because I respect him and in that in the way I want him to pray mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> 
Okay, um, Grandma D, would you like to comment on the prayer? Well, I'll start at the end, so I won't forget. I forgot, probably forgot the beginning, but he's talking about the how they were gathered there, and there were women also, and that they all got together, and that that they enjoyed being together. Then going back, he's talking about winter time and about the snow being on the ground, and that the elders always uh, always were. I guess glad to see whatever the change of the season because that meant uh, I'm just going by where I'm thinking. I think it just meant that they they uh, lived another year to see another season, a winter season or whatever, whatever season. So. Oh, thank you, Grandma. Um, Grandma Dorothy, would you like to make any comments on the prayer? I just, I just always marvel at the times they mentioned Salt Bay Kiaga. Those were our elders. They say the recently born people. And that's who we seem to have the most, um, most, uh, we meet with the Salt Bay Kiaga more than ever, this, you know, our generation. And they seem to sometime know more than we do. But the elders, our elders, mention them all the time in their prayers, in their talks, and everything. Some was out of concern that this would happen. And I'm proud we're getting to hear those, the, the, the sayings that we hear the most out of their prayers. They prayed for us. Obaha. Oh, that's amazing. I like, I like that. It's, it's nice to hear like uh, how much uh, they think of the future, you know, and it's like they're talking about us. That's awesome. Oh, oh. Um, all right. 
Uh, let's see. I think we were, let me look at my notes. Last week, we stopped at uh, Yale Spotted Bird. Um, we could start with him again at, and then listen to that and then continue on to the rest of the recording. Oh, there was something I wanted to share about Yale. Oh, yeah, Andre. This is my brother-in-law. He's we're all related, so but he was my real brother-in-law. <laughs> he had a knowledge for all of and in, in uh, songs, old songs from his grandfather. And I'm starting to find those on recordings. <laughs> that was the new chairman's grandfather. And um, I don't know if I should mention it, but the women that are so, uh, we all are, about missing Kiowa women, I'll just say this, it hits that family harder than anybody, chairman especially. So I wonder if anybody is aware of that. And I just wanted to mention, I'll go into further detail, but some of Delores knows. And wow. she, um, my niece, Patsy Ruth, the chairman's mother, was one of the first red dressed people that is still missing. And that really hits home when the people that are kin to them seen that see that you know the push for that but i don't know and nobody ever heard of that and we just it's just not mentioned but since there's just four of us i thought i'd mention it she went missing when the chairman was a little boy his mother and since there's so few of us i just thought i'd mention it And I don't know if they, you know, but she was my friend as well as my niece, Patsy, because we were the same age. Oh. And wow. I just thought, Hande. I was just saying uh, thank you for mentioning that, Grandma. Huh. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, um, um, Anyway, there's a lot of details, but I just thought I'd mention that. It oh. just, and that means there's a few of us, so I thought I'd mention it today because it's been on my mind. Oh, ho. that's good to know. Well, I'm sorry, uh, Melody, what, what was the number of the, um, the recording, 38? Or? It's uh, number 38, and it's called Use of Nature. Okay. Okay, which one is it, if we're going to listen to it? Um, was... that, that's the one that we were just listening to. with. Uh, yeah. This uh, was important to me, Dolores. You're kin to them, too. And I thought it yeah. was hard to not mention it. Yeah. Things we need to mention. Hey, goodbye. Hey, goodbye. Hey, goodbye. Eight. And there's a lot of things I think of that I should mention to the, the younger generation. That if we don't say nothing now, it'll never be known. I think uh, earlier, sometime on um, some, maybe it was Joe Pose, they were on some, the women were on this topic and I think uh, Larry was on the program because you know his mother was was, was missing and and I, yeah and he was on, he was on the I don't know when it was and I just think it's that group that there's a group that that had that in this I mean among the car when the the tribes in the southwest area, whatever they're called. Anyway, I think he was on the on one of their programs. Oh. I never, I forget. I never mentioned. I never listened to that, the Indian program. 
Yeah. I always forget to turn it on. It's I see that they, um, you know, they post it, what their topics will be and who their speakers will be or guests. They put it on Facebook and I always see it and I always miss it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> to um, so, so this speaker that we're going to listen to is a Yale Spotted Bird. <clears throat> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press play. Um, I hope he uh, sings. He had a good voice. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to call. Go เออดิคีดะปกกะออนอเซตแบกกะตงมะดิกะเฮอะอืมเออทําเยอะสปอร์ตเบิร์ดเออดิคีอ่ะกอดดอกดอกไอ้ดอกกะอันอมดอนเด
And uh, then he went on to speak about uh, uh, they were very good to their horses because they were very useful. And he didn't know where or how or when the horses came to the Kiowas. And then uh, he spoke about uh, how everyone was good to one another. And he's talked about <clears throat> there was no such thing as abuse of, it, of anyone. Uh, he, yes. spoke of, uh, he spoke of the, the women, the wives and the women. And, you know, first he mentioned the horses and then he, then he talked talk about the women. <clears throat> so that was good <laughs> that what he said <laughs> are you finished Dolores oh oh Omaha and you notice you know I was almost a grown woman before I ever seen anybody get struck uh, anywhere bodily that's how good Kiowa people were to each other. We never seen physical abuse. Is that right, Dolores? Well, I never did. I didn't either. I didn't. I think I've seen somebody get slapped in a movie or something. <laughs> and, and we just weren't subject to that. <clears throat> Kiowa men were nice good providers they were gentle and we and we were lucky enough to grow up in the atmosphere like that and I, I just that was one virtue i just love and then there was a word he said that i had not heard used in conversation that's why i got your attention the uh -huh. hang all day hang on I don't get, I don't, I, I never heard hey no. I always say, hi, I'm Hende, a uh, Honde, or are you standing in line last? And he said, hey, ne. And the way he used it, it was the way I heard it when I was young. And yeah, he said maybe that's the expression, but he said something that I tried to remember, but I couldn't because yeah. uh, I it's haven't, right. I never did hear it. So yeah. if I did, I've forgotten. So hey, I no, I, yeah, uh, it was something. Oh, he's a hey, no, I did. And that's, I was standing last in line. Hey, God, no, I'll tell you how to need to. I don't know. Hannah, I don't hear either good. But that was really a surprise that old Kaiwa standing in line. But that physical part, I think I even seen it in a movie if I seen it at all. <clears throat> we just didn't see stuff like that. And then growing up, you know, when we finally got houses, I guess, and we were separate, but our family didn't do stuff like that. Not exposed to the outside world too much. But that was the Kiowa home in those days. Wow. <clears throat> What a time. I just wanted to verify that with you because we just didn't ever hear of things like that. It's comforting for the things we see now. Any comments or was this just still four of us? <laughs> It's still, it's still four of us. <clears throat> I think it's really interesting to hear. I heard him say, um, and then he said, 
that's to wh whip somebody. <laughs> huh, Huddleto? I don't think Kiowa men even put up with seeing other men mistreat their horses or their animals. Hmm. It was just our life. Yeah. And it's, but I wanted Miss Sarah Guerra to, to uh, tell me what she thought. And it's the same thing. You just don't make it up and say that your grandmas were brought up in a gentler time. Oh. That way. Well, generally, that's what all of these uh, recordings they'll say. They'll talk about the old time, then they'll say, but it's not that way today. Right. So someone will, will say that invariably whenever it depends on the subject. But they'll say that that it's not that way today. They talk, describe their life as they knew it or remember it. And then they they always say that it's not that way today. <clears throat> and I remember it's the way that one of them was the way that you treated and the, the respect and the, you had for your family and how you uh, took care of one another as a tribe, as a band or whatever. So anyway, they always say, but it's not that way today. And that was what, 50 years ago or what? Yeah, it did. Late, late, late 70s. Wow. And things are even more different now. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I wanted two of us to agree with it either because we used to, we lived it. Yeah. And that was a beautiful time. Now there's so much filth that it, it, it even embarrass yourself when you see speech on in different places from our youngsters. Mm -hmm. Can't help it. They'll say that's the way they were raised. Mm. Well. This is more or less off the subject, but since we're talking about today, as opposed to when I grew up, the way is the, the, the styles and the fashion, and they get worse, so I, I can't buy anything in a store now. There's no point in me going, because I'm cold natured and I want to be covered up, and I, I I was remarked once, I told one, one of my granddaughters, maybe two of them, I said, I was telling, um, they knew, they know that I don't like a sleeveless clothes, and I know I don't like them anyway. They know. And I said, uh, well, I don't want to look at your skin. I want to see the fabric, because I like to sew, and fabric is what I want to look at. I don't need to see your skin. And which is what I see more of today. There, you look at, I thought in the wintertime, I'd look at the newscasters and their plunging necklines. Sometimes they're square and they even yes. now they, they wear sleeveless dresses and it's wintertime. And then yeah. they were, then they were tights. You know, I don't, I don't want to see what you look like either. Yes. Uh, because that's what uh, clothing is for. And it's to adorn yourself with with your clothes. And this, I mean, that's just the way I feel. It's just it's just uh, that way now. Look at it, there's nothing, no modesty. That you wear your skirts up to your thighs and you know, all, <laughs> everything. And then you show as much of your body as you can, as you dare show, I guess. I agree. That, that all goes. That all goes with. Uh, I know that. If, <clears throat> that's what the women would say too, because they they were dressed with their long, power dresses, and so anyway, that that just 
from my <laughs> where I am today, that's what I'm saying. Just like the, the then as the in these recordings, they'll always say it's not that way today. Well, it's not that way today. Right. My kids, I I never and, had a lot of money raising my kids, but they always, I mean, if they wore a jeans that had a hole in the knee, they had that hole was patched. It didn't show off. And these kids were these, I had sixth grade where I volunteered last year and the pants that they wore, it, they were so afraid they didn't cover anything. And, yeah. and it was a shame. And they buy them that way. They pay like a hundred dollars for something that belongs in a rag bag. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so and, anyway. But uh, well, that's, that's why we don't have vulgarity even in our language. Other tribes do all around us. But I'm proud that we do not. So th that was just something that 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 back in the late seventies, that's the way they saw our world and what we were beginning to live with. And then that's when they always said that 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 wasn't it. gazelle bad is what they use that word a lot when they when they were talking about how you didn't look after or check in on your relatives or you didn't like they did, like they were taught. And he said, one of them, one, it was a man, he was said, anyway, anyway, they keep gazelle me. Yep. That, that's, that's just it. That's just the expression they use and that's the way it is. And to say, they'd say, now, please, but we never heard our, our brothers even talk of color. Not by any means. Not around us. And it's don't bite all, hey. It's how you call swear words. Don't bite. Don't but oh, hey. Yeah. That's bad curse words or to me to use that name in vain. It just makes you it makes me shudder. That is the worst. And said no don't don't but oh hey. Well yeah. uh my grandson wore and when I saw him earlier in the spring, I think I was at that uh, graduation thing, whatever, at the complex. Before we even went in, inside, he was outside and he came out and he met me and we were talking. And then I don't know how it was, somebody, uh, whatever role he plays in that reservation dogs, and yeah. they called him by that name and then he looked at me and he said, he said, Grandma, he said, I don't want to ever want you to see that show. And I said, why not? And he said, because the way they talk. And I said, well, then why are you in it? Why are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It's just a word in the vocabulary now. And that's awful. Well, <clears throat> the way they talk, that's why it's in the script, because that's the way they talk. Yeah. So I said, well, that's sad. And that's all I said. We we went on into where we were there. So we didn't get into a big discussion. It was just that he said, well, grandma, that's just the way they talk. That's the way it is. And so, yeah, they they forget that there's a few of us still around. Well, they don't care. Uh -huh. That's mm -hmm. just it. That's what the elders were saying. That's what they're saying to me when they mm -hmm. talk about the way they grew up and the way we are. They're just, I guess, saying that we don't care. I mean, there's nothing about them that there's nothing that offends them. 
Yeah. So. Okay, let's go to the next speaker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. Oh, all right. Let me press play here. I like the horse. I like the monkey. <laughs> Oh. Hey, I'll take here and go. Don't get Go like a gold. Hey, take that. Yeah, Mark. Belt <laughs> Take it high, get it. On him, oh yeah, bye. Yak, yeah, I got it. I get it out, out. So, get it on. Oh, get it. Oh, the the they <laughs> He okay. used, used my favorite word, Gyanbato. Oh. <clears throat> uh, Grandma D, would you like to comment? Well, <clears throat> he used a lot of words, a lot of phrases that I'm trying to remember them all. I need. Mean, Oh, it says, he said, take a tag. I know it. I hear but I guess we were speaking or describing Kiowa ways, take a tag. And then uh, another word he said was, uh, <clears throat> uh, I can't read my Kiowa, but he's just using these. <clears throat> adjectives actually to uh, describe Kiowas and the way they live. And uh, I'm good, they thought. And then he said, Hon, hon oya fahegu. And that means they didn't, they don't pretend that they don't see or recognize their, uh, or they don't forget their relatives. Yeah. Uh, Dorothy, as yeah. oh yeah, as oh yeah, Fahegu, does that mean that you purposely ignore somebody and you act like you don't see them? Yeah. Emtal Fahegu. Yeah. So anyway, he was talking about all those things that the Kawas did not do. They were just uh, looked after one another. And then he said, that's why. Uh, 
because God was watching over them and that's how they learned to pray. That's why they prayed. That's why they prayed. Right. So that because uh, they want to live a good life. So they don't want to ignore anyone. They want to be good people because all these words that he used, they describe their good uh, virtues to have. Right. I can't remember them all, but they're all, they're all, I've heard, I've heard them use, most of them. There was one word that I just didn't get at all. But anyway, that's what he's talking about. Oh, oh. Um, Grandma Dorothy? Comment? Uh, I guess I, I know I was reminded of this word through these recordings, but I always knew it because he composed a song during the height of the World War II. And it's a goito gudo, a kindo, bekein batal gu, bekein batal gu, bekein batal gu. Oh, go hope. These are on tie. It means the, the Kiowa boys are like revered or respected. The warriors keep on respecting them all over the world. And he's using it as a short goito guda e kyaindo bekyaimbatogu. That's a powerful word in the Kiowa language. It's respect. I even respect my little one year old baby. But that's the way um, they used and they treated it and they lived it. And all of his songs talk about gentleness, respect, kindness. But that word is pretty powerful in our language. And he's using some powerful words in this one little lesson. That's Dolores' uh, father. Oba. Oh, that's awesome. Was that uh, that song um, that you mentioned, Grandma Dorothy? Is that um, um, a honoring song, a veteran song? It's a war mother song. A oh, war mother song. Okay. When he composed that. A whole report of Kiowa woman songs. Oh, okay. Oh, awesome. That's pretty. And you gotta oh. give, you gotta find the, and before we leave this world, we got to find the true recordings of who made what song. Oh. Other organizations and try to get that as straight as we can. Her name Ohota. Oh. Ohota means when you claim to have done something and you didn't do it. Oh. That's another hard word, but a lot of people do that nowadays. Oh, Ohota. Oh. Yeah. O H O. You know, you. Is that how you say it, Dolores? Oh, the when people. Oh. Oh. And that's what I, I do in my free time now. I go through the songs and I'm trying to decipher the words. Oh. Since it, it's, uh, you know, the war mothers is getting, uh, are getting more, more uh, mentioned this in this era so I don't go to meetings but I pay my dues oh. but they're the only ones that have a charter and they done it formally back in 1944 
<laughs> so even then we were we were we had patriotism more than any other area I knew of. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because everybody had somebody in World War II. That was a long, frightening years. Hmm. You didn't want nobody coming from the postal service to your house. The era oh. of the females when they write to you every most of it was cut out because it was censored you never knew where the warriors were at and they called it a female and they they cut it down to taking pictures where it was half of a postcard almost their letters wow and then they put somewhere in germany somewhere in africa stuff like that never knew where they were you didn't hear from them for sometime months at a time it mm. was the hardest war to live through food was rationed gas was rationed you could only go get by on five gallons a week you had, to have, you had to have gas stamps. If you had a car, then you, you had tires you had to worry about. So mm. you only have so much sugar. Our folks couldn't. A little book should be written about that. Nobody ever wrote that on the, on the Indians, how it affected us. Hmm. Yet to go with what they do with now with their food stamps, but you had to go with uh, so you could only have so many pounds of different kind of food even. Wow. So pray hard. We're not going toward that again. Right. Uncle, I'm finished. I just said an uncle. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm going to press play here. I love hearing their voices. <laughs> oh. oh, hey, we made it to the end. Went to the end of that recording. All right, so let's see. Um, let me look at my notes from last week. So I think there were a few others that uh, people wanted to hear. Um, so there's the one we just listened to was Use of Nature. And then there's <clears throat> Kiowa's Till Soil, um, Indian Medicine, uh, Kiowa War Bonnets, uh, Brush Dance, Changes After Settlement. Melody, there Hyundai. were so few of us here today. And I believe the Zotais had a request in for something too. So maybe they would want to pick from those. Yeah. Um, and so we can do the others when the other people are back. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see. I think in my notes last week, uh, yeah, Terry yeah. wanted the war bonnet one, changes after settlement, or the brush dance one. Do you have any preference? First, I want to ask if uh, in this uh, session, did the women not speak? Because I didn't hear any women. No, they did. Oh, oh yeah. I think I think Hazel did. Yeah, they did uh last week, right before Yale. Um, let's see, it was Isabel Two Hatchet. Oh, okay. I've got Isabel. And, yeah. 
Esther, Esther Topa, and then uh, Hazel Moonstone. Okay. There were three of them that we heard. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, let me share the, uh, oh, let's look at the chat. Okay, brush dance. All right, so we have a vote for brush dance, the brush dance recording. How's that sound? They are cool, are cool. Are cool. Are cool, uh, it's brush dance. Are cool, are cool. Are cool. Are cool. I'm looking for it. I'll be back in about five minutes. Okay. I'm looking for the recording. Oh, here it is. Okay. I found it. Let me share my screen again. All right. Uh, cool. uh, this is a uh, Kiowa culture program number 126 brush dance is what it says. Kiowa Cultural Program on this day of December the 18th, 1978, here at the Witchline Church. Those that are present here with us today is Lloyd Toybo, Bill Spotted Bird, and Guy Tampi, and James Soberhorn, George Sudle, Stephen Zotai, Hazel Boton, Isabel Tuatchet, Lucy, well, Lucy is not here today, Esther Topai, Margaret Dinkoff, I myself, Jasper Sankadota. And at this time, uh, I'm going to ask uh, our, our, our head translator, Lloyd Toybo, to give us an invocation. Oh, 
ਹੋਵਾ ਫਿਰ ਤੱਕ ਤੋਦੋਕਮ ਕਾਨੋ ਤੋਇਓ ਬਾਪਾ ਓਪੇ ਕੋ ਕਿਆਕੋਂ ਬਾਤ ਯਾਰ ਕੋਲਾ ਹਿਓ ਕਿਆ ਫਾਇ ਕੀ ਯਾਰ ਕੋਲਾ ਨਿਓ ਕੋਈ ਯਾਰ ਕੋਲਾ ਨਿਓ ਸਾਈ ਕੋਲਾ ਓਵਰ ਤਾ ਪਰ ਤੇ ਤਾ ਦਾ ਕੋਮਾ ਤੇ ਕਿ ਕੰਮ ਦਾ ਕਿ ਤੇ ਪਰ ਤੋ ਐ ਕੋ ਕੀ ਤਾ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਹੋਂ ਕੋ ਤਾ ਪਤਾ ਤੋ ਐ ਕੋ ਕੀ ਤਾ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਨੋਇ ਕੋ ਤੋ ਅਮ ਕੋ ਬੋਇ ਤੋ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਥਾ ਕਿ ਤੋ ਤੇ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਤੋ ਕਿ ਕੋ ਨਾਲੇ ਕੋ ਆਪਾ ਕੋ ਇਹ ਉਹ ਕੋ ਦਾਨ ਹੈ ਆਤਾ ਅਮ ਕਿ ਯਨਾਇ ਕਿ ਤਾਂ ਪਾਇ ਕਿ ਕਿਆ ਤੋ ਕਿ ਤੋਂ ਥਾਇ ਕਿ ਤੋ ਆਇਆ ਖਮ ਤੋ ਕਿਆ ਗੋਇ ਬਤਾ ਤੇ ਆਮੈ ਤੋ ਤੇ ਪੈ ਤਾਂ ਕਥਾਮ ਤਾ ਪਵੈ ਕਿ ਕੀ ਤਾ ਤਾ ਤੋ ਤੋ ਗੋਇ ਬਤਾ ਥਾਮ ਕਿਆ ਹਾਇ ਕੋਲਨ ਕਿਆ ਥਾਇ ਤੇ ਤੋਂ ਤੋ ਕਿਉਂ ਤੇ ਤੋ ਕਿਆਂ ਦੋ ਕਿ ਤਰਾਂ ਕਿਆ ਥਾਇ ਕਿਉਂ ਤੇ ਪੈ ਤੋ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕੀ ਤੇ ਕੋ ਚੰਤੇ ਮੋਥਾਤ ਔ ਤੇ ਸੋਇਲਿਆਂ ਕੋ ਤੋ ਤੇ ਕੀ ਤੇ ਕੋ ਕੋ ਤੇ ਔ ਚੰਤ ਔ ਕਿ ਸੋ ਤੇ ਸਾਇ ਥੋ ਕਿਆ ਤੋ ਕਿ ਅਮ ਤੋਤੇ ਪੇਤਮ ਤੋਤੇ ਪੇਤਾਇਓਂ ਤੇ ਐ ਕੂ ਤੋਤੇ ਕੂ ਤੋਤੇ ਪੇਤੇ ਥਨਮ ਤੇ ਤੋ ਹੋਨਾ ਕੇ ਅਮ ਪੇ ਗਾਇਆ ਪਾਲੇ ਤੋ ਮੋਨ ਤਿਉਂ ਤੇ ਕੁਤ ਔ ਕੋਮ ਤੋਤੇ ਪੇਤਾ ਸੋ ਲੋ ਕੇ ਥਾ ਮੈਂ ਕੋ ਕੀ ਤੋ ਤੋਤੇ ਆਈ ਕੋ ਪੇ All right. Uh Brahma D, would you like to start off with any comments? Well, it was a very lengthy prayer. But just in general, he's thanking God for life and for this world and work. And then what I remember from it is that um even though there are hard times and the, the god always uh, answers prayer and then he talked this is what i remember about not only my father but other elders pray that they always uh, they understand mm -hmm. that we're not here forever that we'll leave sometime but that he's grateful to be here still and he's not speaking all of himself but all the elders that were that they're still here and then prayed for the uh the families his family and all their families then he spoke about uh people who uh some people have gone on the, and uh the lord has called them and they're gone they're no longer here but we the he understands that's the way life is that's the way that's the way god um uh it's god's way that we're here not all the time we go home and then uh then it's near uh christmas as so december the 17th he was praying about the big day that's coming uh when god was good to us and kind to us and and uh and uh uh his son was born and for and so he mentioned christmas coming up and so like i said there are a lot of words there that i wish i could really dwell on and see what they really meant but i've heard them many many times in uh, in elders prayers they're always grateful to be here they always understand that the life span is not forever and that uh but nevertheless they're grateful for their care the way that that they live to that they're alive and that they're able to be here 
still. So that's what I think about that. The way that's the way they usually pray, and uh, I always think that all they went through, and they still have uh, gratitude. They're still here. So that's just my comment. That's the way they always pray. Oh, uh -huh. um, let's see. Um, Grandma Dorothy, are you back? I think she's still stepped away. Um, okay, so let's um, let's go to the. Um, I guess it would be the first speaker. Uncle. Our subject for today will be what is known as a brush dance. The idea of it is we're going to try to confirm what it is, what it means. Now there are, most of us do not know exactly what, where and how it originated. So at this time, uh, Lloyd Torball gave us an idea. Goi guhun tek aokia, kia taokia. Atel do taote. Okay, that was very brief. Um, He's always brief. <laughs> Grandma D, can you uh, comment on that or translate? Well, he said that he doesn't really know where and how it came about, but he said he doesn't know that, but he said, I think it's what he said. We'll be on a horse, horseback, and he'll be dragging a brush. And behind him will be men and women. And they, and they all they all have brushes, brush or whatever, part of a tree or whatever they do, and then they come behind and then they they sing. He doesn't say when they do this, but I guess he doesn't know, but that, that's what that's the first time I ever heard of someone being on a horse and coming in. I just saw them come in with just a twig nowadays. It sounds like he had this man had a but this man would have a brush, uh, I guess part of a tree. I don't know. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Oh, <clears throat> oh. Let's see. Uh, Grandma Dorothy, are you back? I think she's still stepped away. Um. 
I'm going to be really interested to see what the others that are in that room on the recording, see what they uh, say to add to that. <clears throat> uh, okay, let me, I think he said James Silverhorn is next, so he's going to talk fast, I just know it. <laughs> 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 be ready to listen. <laughs> we might have to listen to it twice. <laughs> okay. Uh, Did you catch anything from that? Yes, he also uh, mentioned a horse. That they're on a horse and he doesn't really know if the same thing there were people that followed him and and he thinks that it was preceded that they went to the wherever the sun that that was there. That was their, uh, that's where they were going, near to wherever the, dance sang, or if they danced, if they went along. And uh, then he said, other tribes did that, but. Uh, I think is it God who called commands. He says the only tribe I heard. He doesn't know why they did that. The other tribes, but then he thinks this preceded the the sun dance. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, oh uh, oh, um, I'm going to read what's in the chat, Yamadi. Um, so uh, the Zotai's so put in the um, chat, um, Terry remembers them doing the brush dance at Warrior Descendants. And then continues, um, started from the creek, had a drum and singers, men danced and women followed. The singers carried the drum and they all followed a horse dragging a big limb. And uh, Dewey Santacoy rode the horse. That's what's in the chat. Well, what, what dance was that? Yeah, because they were saying double horn said, it, one of them said Sundance. They didn't know which dance. So anyway, and uh, so this dance that talking about, I guess I don't know what dance that is either. Grandma D, I read 
I read some accounts that had something similar. They didn't call it the brush dance, but had some something similar they mentioned to this um, before the Sundance when they were cutting yeah. the pole and making the, the arbors and stuff. Yeah, I guess that was a that was a lot of activity going on before, of course, you remember the I think the children or somebody the, the, the rabbits or so took the sand that for some reason they used sand. And so anyway, this is this is probably part of this. And so yeah. Uh and just like this that uh or do we rode in the horse that's what they did i would say that i've never seen that you know where someone rode a horse in they just uh they just dance and i see less of brushes but i don't i'm not there that much so it wouldn't be fair for me to Say what I saw, because I'm not there that often. That's really interesting, though. So it was what uh, James Silverhorn was saying that it was part of, or may it was part of the activities, before, like in preparation for the Sundance. Uh, uh, he think he thinks so. Uh, um, I think that's what he said. <clears throat> and he mentioned other tribes like doing the same thing or participating in the well climate. he didn't he didn't know why they they did that he so he mentioned it he said he didn't know and i think uh, the only one he said was uh uh guy good that's comanche james Sil silverhorn said yes that. he did that he did say that okay okay but he didn't know Oh, that's why interesting. when they did their dance. So. Do you think they got it from us? <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when they came down from Shoshone land and wanted to figure out how to, how to act on the plains. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, let me check and see. Uh, Grandma Dorothy, are you back? Give her an, give her an incomplete. She's not there. <laughs> I know. I put you uh, away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she's going to like this recording. <laughs> I know she likes yeah. it. Uh, okay. Uh, any other questions? Let me look at the chat. Are any other comments from anyone oh, here? It would be a... <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we'll uh, play the next speaker then. Margaret didn't call. Hey, the key ankle, I they almost Go so to bad oil, dame. I key at oil, no. 
the cholo no ya hai get the oh go 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 i go 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 to to i con to the go i i den ko to amo ho ko to do the amo ho de oh yo ko hai to go ya hai get the we talk to get on me get on me no we gonna how they all change oh it got you so good or it's on I got I keep all day it's on for the gay day we got tie your coy go wake so the coy car band my pay on here band my I couldn't have all called it in my back of the car. No, ye ain't, ye ain't though they can't all top in here. All top in here, we got all in tag. They got two, two, we got in here, but they got out, they got a cool body. Get more hope. They, no get so he power oh yeah go go and open man my good pay and the ban the ne one and mona name guna he go ah kui but don't get the um get so me oh yeah they know get boom I could go and go by the go go sort of what a week ago. I could go and get more hope. They know to you hide it. Okay. Um, see, Grandma D. Like, yeah, it's unfortunate many more elders. I probably remember a lot that fill in what the rest of them have. However, this is real interesting. Uh, uh, Margaret Danko, and she said uh, she saw, she actually saw the brush, bringing the brush. She said it was in among the Cheyenne. And she went with her parents, and she doesn't recall that she doesn't. She doesn't think they danced. She just thinks that they this awkward. And uh, the two men. Oh, oh, she didn't limit it to the number. She said the the men, young men, I would get on their horses. And there were and and the brushes were they were put on the shelter or what the arbor around the Sundance circle, I guess. And she said uh, a few of, and then a few of the young women got on horses also. And then they all followed behind with their brush, but she wasn't, she did not recall, she said she does not think they danced. They were just bringing the brush. This is among the Cheyenne this is in Cheyenne country. And she said, I was there and I actually saw it. So, of course, uh, I'm sure that maybe the Cheyennes uh, held the Sundance after uh, so the car was stopped. So that's probably and the time that she saw it, because Margaret is is younger than my father, I know. So, so it was probably after the car was didn't uh, stop the Sundance. That's my comment that I see. But she said, Cheyenne country. Oh. 
<laughs> but Margaret Dankos, I listen to him. She's always, uh, she always adds something. She always knows, uh, adds something else that someone didn't say. So she's very uh, observing, I guess. And, and so she always has an interest, interesting details to whatever the subject is. When she's there, she's not always there. Oh, yeah, that is a lot of good details that she has. <clears throat> it's very interesting. I'm back. Hi, Grandma. Hi. Did you catch this last speaker talking? Uh, Margaret Denka? Oh, uh, yeah. Margaret was an interesting woman. I just, I, I just keep in wonder that Dolores and I are actually alive with Terry's mother, Hattie Jean. When we actually talk to people that seen all of this. And I always, I wonder, I say, we've seen it for a purpose. Maybe it was in line for us to share it. How do y'all get bone, ma? Uh, there's a yellow jacket. I'm going to ask you, how do you say B? I know a yellow jacket is a tail shape. But well, how do you? <clears throat> word, I know tail shape. <laughs> He's a, a peon toya in my kitchen, and I had to go help kill him. Uh oh. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> oh, no. Come in when the door opens. Oh. I said he was flying around in the kitchen. I had to go in for the kill. Oh, yikes. Those things, they hurt. Um, I could look in the glossary, unless, Lori, unless you have the glossary nearby. I'm just going to look and see if I could find anything. <clears throat> Yikes. Sorry, Mel, I don't have it up. Okay, yeah, I was trying to see if I could. Let me try opening it. It's going to take a minute. <clears throat> it's got a download here. Okay, let's see. Uh, what are we looking for? Yellow jacket. Um, hmm. Not. Uh, Let me see if one of these talks about a sting, getting stung or bit <laughs> by one. I'm still looking. Let's see. Oh. Let's try another word. This, uh, this uh, book, it's a, the time that the missionaries sent clothes to Rainy Mountain Church and they wore them. I've got the, the book with them uh, telling the story. Oh, wow. And... Dolores, you've got one that was mailed to you, the book. You might check. 
No, which book is that? It's a book that Daniel and uh, Daniel Harbour and Andrew McKenzie and what's her name from uh, Colorado. The one they wrote after was the the translation. Law, Law Watkins. <laughs> no, I don't have it. I don't have no, that. You got one mailed the same time I did. It's I think it's in the mail. You might check the office. Well, it's probably at Carnegie then. Yeah. But you got one mail key. It's uh, written by them and it's from these classes. International Journal of American Lin Linguistics. Text in the in indigenous languages of the Americans. Plains Life and Kiowa. Voices from a tribe in transition. And it's wow. got all of this written. I'll show it to you, um, Melody. Oh. And I think Melody got one uh, from Andrew. Oh, that's interesting. I think uh, uh, Faye at the language program said that um, there is a package for me at the office. And yeah, y'all got one each. <clears throat> that's interesting. It's interesting reading. Oh. It's all written in Parker's uh, Parker's way. McKenzie. Oh. You saw me. Oh. Um. Okay, so in the glossary, there are two words. So um, there's a word for a wasp or a yellow jacket, and then one for a bee, like you said. So Adel say is the wasp, and then a honeybee is, let's see, bain off, bain, bain off. I thought I. Is a yellow jacket, is that a dale sape? That's what it says. It says, yeah, dale sape, wasp, any wasp like insect. And he was, and the way the guy was like, I said, Piotoya in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would, you could describe a bird or a, a plane in the same way. Oh, yikes. But I oh, have to kill him. <laughs> Good. Here's another word. Um, this says, so that it'll save for, the, for a wasp in general. And then here's a word for a yellow jacket wasp. I guess more specific. Huh? It says, uh, it'll save food. Oh. You'd think since we say yellow jacket in Indian, he'd be a good cook. <laughs> good <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having trouble with the lady that is beautiful on Facebook. I never met her, I don't think. I seen her this weekend. Ah, bah. It's APA, and then the last part is L O A M. Now, who, how do you say that name? Do you know D? Oh, no. I can't read it. It's Percy Ancu's, uh, that she's an Ancu. I have never been able to translate that. Uh, oh. but she's still alive. She wears a beautiful blue background buckskin dress. How would you say that? Apalom, apalom, apalom. What does it mean? I wish she'd call in and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's one name I cannot transfer. I can't. Uh -huh. I'll fight with the name for a long time and finally <laughs> figure it out. But this one, I can't. 
And <laughs> Kiowa is not Kiowa until you get the pronunciation of any word. Oh. Did the she, correct. did she, uh, have you heard her say it? Uh -uh. I just see oh. it on Facebook. Oh, huh. Oh. I know the way I translated it's ah, but it was taken at a wedding evidently yesterday or the day before. Oh. At a, <laughs> at a teepee in, uh, on Ancu land or somewhere. Oh, wow. Mark and Q got married. I seen someone with a kilt on too. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, get to the way you don't sound like as a song, huh? Ducky, Ducky and Q married them. I think, you know, I've seen him, the, the elder. <laughs> huh. That's crazy. But uh, Terry, uh, so time I'd be interested. I've seen a kilt, so I imagine they played the back button. <laughs> wow. Hey, good day, get my soap, get the goy. Goy, kakum, but goy. How would you say Kaiwa ways? Goy, how are you? Yeah, my soap, get the mixed up. I mean, we're <laughs> intertwining everything. <laughs> and uh, the name that I was proud of more was what, about 10 years ago, when it was discovered that the, the thong bot, it was actually flute, the last name of the, the Dumbos, mm. you know, and all through the Riverside days and stuff, they went through being called Dumbo. And all that time it was thrown about. Huh. I, that's why I'm trying to decipher the names. It's my favorite subject. We have oh. over 50, 50 names with bear in it. Uh -huh. Wow. <clears throat> And well over, you know, with the horse and the, that one family, you know, they have so much, to, so many variations of their name, like Saint Donkey, Satoki, hunting horse, Satok, and just plain horse. It's all one big family. Melody, what's uh is, is the tape near? Are we have we finished it? Um, let me see. Um, we are almost through with it. Um, looks like uh we're a little maybe three quarters of the way. Um, let's see. Uh, so we listen to Margaret Danka, and I can listen. Um, uh, let me play the next speaker here. So, uh, Grandma Dorothy, this tape we're listening to, it's uh number uh. 136, I think. Yeah, no, 126. And it's about the brush dance. So let's see. Uh, cool. These are what would you call on our <laughs> you spotted bird? Where Go ahead. It's all right. Okay. I'm just, I just, I just ramble. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, cool. I have the key to tell you part of your daughter. I don't have to go. I could have a dog. No, I go. No, no, a dog. I go. Probably a dog. They go that dog cold gill, they the tie gill, they dog the hang, they the wood up all at all day. The phone dog of all to the get dog, I got a tight dinner. Up a hog, get high, get dog, gang, you go. And go eat, don't hop. 
He said, Ali Tony. I had to say that before I forgot it. Oh, that's awesome. My, yeah. My dad sings that on the, it was Hanks, but I never got the last words. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's a old lady think, talks talking about courting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, who would think that when you're this old? <laughs> it's kind of humorous. That's why maybe he doesn't put the words in it. And <laughs> what an interesting story. I know that song. <laughs> I just never grabbed the last part. And I finally got the words. Thank you, Yale. <laughs> Oh, how, how happy I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a treasure. It explains Akui. And Dolores probably, uh, I know she has the more, uh, the explanation where it's a religion. It was not a dance to dance in there. Uh, signifying, where did we get the brush dance then? Mm. I'm sorry, D. I just had to get that out because I was, I got That's those words. Okay. I can't remember everything anyway. <laughs> well, he was, uh, yeah, was explaining that. None of those that will that work with this program were ever there or ever saw a, a brush dance, but they heard stories from the elders and their grandparents. And it said when the Sundance was all set up, you can see that was a big uh, undertaking to have a make the Sundance circle. And that's when they bought the brush from uh, four to pump like an arbor. And he also mentioned uh, men on horseback, young men on horseback. And he Gail also said that there would be some young women on the horse be riding behind the, the uh, young men, just like um, Margaret mentioned among the Cheyennes. And then <clears throat> said it was a, uh, it was not a dance per se, but was a, a reverent part uh, of uh, the dance that was related to the sun dance, and uh, and so uh, it wasn't like a dance. I, it was part of a. It was more, I guess formal or whatever the word I can't think of it but anyway and that's what and then he said after everything was set up everything was going then the then the old ladies they had a Sali the old women Sali they were the last he called them Zelbeha I think before he was talking. Anyway he said they came in last with their uh grandchildren with their children, probably all their grandchildren, and they brought in the sand to put uh, within the Sundance circle. And, when, and uh, they sang as they came. So that he said that was a lot. They were the last group to come in and take part. And that was their part. They, uh, they brought the sand from wherever they got it, probably and then they helped had the help of their the children probably their grandchildren great grandchildren so and another thing are you ready for me oh wow oh. Oh. at the end he named for the first time I heard them mention Ohoma Tonkonga and then the camp circle. 
the way it's written, uh, like Otto and the Oboe Koigu, you know, that. So it's formally named in these tapes, the camp, the bands we had as you came in. Uh, at the entrance in the circle, that's very interesting that he named uh, the modern organizations back, you know, where they came from. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, Paul. Um, and there's another song, but that one says, Tali Kigo Pan Bad and that's a faster one, and they use it now for um, a rabbit. But it's a cleanup song for the Sundance. Tali Kiga Pan Bad Aha. And Yeah. It's it's so interesting. That that done me a lot of good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a fun one. <clears throat> that was surprising to hear the song at the end. I like that. Um, let's see. I think I might have a recording of uh, Dane singing that song, the, the song yeah. that he was talking about, about the sand. Well, Melody, we got that off of the tape. Oh, that's right. A long right. time ago. That <clears throat> one. And uh, you know what? Uh, you should you should play that more, that one, and get that information off of that just to share. Oh, that I mean yeah. the talking. Yale has done a lot of good today. <clears throat> so interesting. Um, so, uh, well, do you want me to play that recording of the the sand sand spreading song? Yeah, because uh, okay. Uh, this is a uh, Dane singing it, so don't tell him I played it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Daddy's singing that on one of the tapes. My yeah, dad. yeah. You have, to, you have to give away if you play it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Tali kiga pain bara hot dum bara way am ga boy be yai gun yai keta ga mo ko ono kyo nya on de pe ma ton kiga pain bara hot dum bara way am ga boy be yai gun yai keta ga mo ko ono kyo nya on de pe I might call on the killing on your own day. And so those are brush dance songs, but they're sung today as rabbit dance songs. Is that what we're saying? Yes. Okay. Because it was uh, what it sounded like is it was part of that same, uh, like what you were talking about, the preparation and kind of getting ready. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this, this was meant to be because it finally came out those those words. All of my life, I've been hunting for those. And I do you want me to rewind? Um, Yale Spotted Bird. You want to hear hear his speech again? Give my dad credit too on there. That came off of Jane Richards and Hanks. Ha! Huh. Yeah, it's on the Hanks collection too. Uh, White Horse sings it on a. They never said White Horse sang those. I he think I might have that one too. He that. sang 63 of different Tonkongia, Ohoma, and Sundance. And they never put on there, and none of them. These are sung by Tain Tiny. Oh. Is it what was it? It's ah kui, right? Ah kui. Ah kui. Ah kui. Ah kui. Ah kui. So here, here's one from the Hanks collection. This is a. Uh, 
grandma and today you want to say like a car was akui akui ha rush dragon pulling <laughs> pulling trees uh, is akui let's see let's see i don't know which order this goes but let's see here Item number eight, cylinder number zero one five eight, strips A, B, and C. Oh, okay. So feel it. Melody. I finally got it. <laughs> Took me six years. <laughs> He's never mentioned, not even the booklets from different places. That uh, I always thought too that the name Kali was Kali. Those old names need to be cut and and uh before we're finished well you know that melody i've told you that they need to be oh thank you so interesting oh it looks like uh the sotai family jumped off um 
but I know we're over time. So uh, thank you for hanging in there a few extra minutes. Um, we'll have to finish. I think we have, it looks like maybe a couple more minutes left on that brush dance recording. Um, so we'll pick up, um, maybe we'll start with Yale Spotterbird again next, next time. And then we'll finish it up. So. No questions from anybody from the, from Let's the public? See. Anyone have any questions? <clears throat> Made me cry. I was so thankful. That was awesome. Good, good history, good information to know. I love it all. And it's recorded, so people who weren't here who might have been interested in the recording, they'll be able to see it. And vision has the words exactly right. <laughs> He's trying. Um, well, I guess we better close up. Um, and I just wanted to let everyone know, um, Alice Ann is on, but she's on listen only because she's driving, but just wanted to let you know that she joined us. And she's been listening in. So, all right. Well, um, I guess we'll close up. Um, Lori, they don't say. Yes. I'm going to start in Kiowa. And then I'd like to read a prayer that I wrote several years ago uh, when I first started this whole journey traveling and um, searching for my, my birth parents. And so, and that is in English, but I've shared it with many churches and they've always liked it. And I think it's appropriate for us today because the people in this group are trying to go on a path to keep the Kiowa language alive and the customs and traditions. So, ata daki kana de. Nabe Tahiru on Tongia Ako Tipa Hande Aim Saida Tata Toge Gaga Ta on So on Kita Got on Oh, dear God, you have led us on this path. Help us to go straight as arrows from your heart. You are the bowman and faith is the bow. We are the arrows of your will. Adjust for the harsh winds of constant change, the ever blowing currents of tribulation. Guide us as we reach the vertex and take us in your hand to make our paths true. Let us be instruments of your holy desire. Though we quiver in the breeze and fear the cold, take us from the dark that we may fly straight at the end of our trial to find our way home. As a strong bowstring sings unreleased, so with the shaft of the heart of the arrow reverberates and quivers in joy as it completes God's design. Obaha. Aho. 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 Thank you, everyone. Aho. Hega ba oi bon ta. Hega ba oi don ta. Aho. Aho. Hega ain't come or I'm in come ta. Aho. Aho.